Eric, you're doing the count here, man. You're, you're doing the uh, you're the rope counter, but you're also going to do a simultaneous interview. Does that work? All right. Multitasking. You can do it. You can multitask, right? Yep. Okay. First off, uh, Nebraska. You're not in Nebraska anymore. You're back in Albuquerque. That's correct. How's that? It's good. It's good to be home. Um, you know, I miss miss Nebraska, but uh, we got three. I miss Nebraska, but you know, I'm, I was ready to be home and. And uh, it's good being around my family. I haven't been around them that much the past few years, and, and uh, it just feels good. It feels good. You looking for a coaching job right now? Um, I want to fight, but money talks. Uh, if I can take care of my family and, and make a good earning, uh, being a coach, you know, depending on where it's at, and. and, and and how much it is, you know, it might it might be enough to make me not fight. But you know, deep down, I want to fight. I want to. I still want to compete. Um, it's just not wrestling anymore. I'm, I, I'm ready to ready to do something else. So. Uh, you got a growing family. Your wife's pregnant, right? Uh, having another kid. Yep. You can have a second boy. Yep. Here's the million dollar question. We're here at the C3 event, and this is for kids to get recruited. Will your sons wrestle? Is that something that you're interested in them doing? Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Um, the way my dad raised me was he never pushed me to do anything. He, you know, he always pushed me to work hard, but he never, he wanted me to play baseball probably more so than wrestling. So, um, you know, but he was one of those dads that said, hey, you know, this is what you want to do. I'm going to support you. And he didn't know a damn thing about it, but, you know, he traveled me and, and I wanted to go places. And uh, and that's, you know, that's, I guess the point I'm getting at is if they wanted to do something else. As long as they worked hard and tried to become the best at it, I don't care. But, you know, I would love for them to ask. Looking at, you know, your career, you, you don't feel like this year was maybe, was? do you feel like it was your best year, even though it wasn't your highest finish? Um, you know, we three? Yeah. Sorry. We talked, no, you're doing a job. We already talked we were going to multitask yeah. here. But, uh, you know, the throat slash was, was a big win for you. And then Carver Hawkeye. Um, you had a great year, man. You won the, won the uh, Midlands. Yep. You just, you had a great season. Um, what do you think it, it says about how you finished and, and, and where you finished in the sport of wrestling? How did you feel about it? I don't, I still hurt. You know, you know, just because I, I really felt like this was going to be a year that I just envisioned it for so long. That I was going to come out on top. That it, was, it didn't happen and it really hurts. And I think watching that guy win probably made it sting a little bit more. Just because I, you know, I did it with a hurt shoulder and I was healthy. You know what I mean? Relatively healthy. So I think, and you know, that was kind of my nemesis in my mind. You know, like after my junior year, I left there and I put his name everywhere in my room. And I'm training to beat him and he's the one who got it done. So, you know, yeah, it was a good year. But at the end of the day, I didn't get it done. And you know, just gotta move on, and, and hopefully that, like I said, if I compete and go into fighting, hopefully, hopefully I never ever feel that feeling again. These kids aren't from a state with a ton of Division One wrestling opportunity. You came from a state with no Division One wrestling opportunity. Um, can guys from the Western states win? I, you know, I talk to people a lot about this. I feel like you guys are at a huge disadvantage out here yeah. in the West. How do guys in the West? How can they be as good as the guys in the East and the Midwest? Well, yeah, just to get. Touch, uh, rewind a little bit, you know, it's, it's true, you know, there's not a lot of opportunity and, you know, you look around, most of these kids are Hispanic like I am, and so, you know, that's the reason I'm out here, you know, I'm trying to, trying to give back and, you know, you're right, and, and, and that's, that's why these things are important, because it gives them opportunity, to, you know, to get looked at, and um, it markets the, the, the wrestling here. You know, if you got Bubba Jenkins walking around, you have Mark Munoz here earlier, you know, you're you're giving them uh, resources and allowing them to network, and it's, it's big. You know, I never had that. I never had that. We never had in college. We had one uh, program, and it's a, the Highlands. And, you know, no offense to them, they're just not great wrestling. And um, in, order to, in order to get to that level, you have to work harder because you don't have the partners. You don't have the coaches. So I think I had to work twice as hard to get to where I was compared to some of the guys that were, you know, at my weight that I was wrestling. You know, just to just to match them, not even just to beat them. So it's tough, you know, and I only got I didn't get recruited by a lot of schools because Who recruited you? Grand Canyon and you Campbell. Said? Grand Canyon and Campbell. Wow. That's it. 
It's only two visits I took. Wow. So, so you can't even have a program anymore. Campbell's obviously flourishing. Exactly, yeah. This is because, yeah, yeah, the pullout wasn't there yet, but, you know, they, they didn't, it's not their fault. No one knew. There wasn't anything going on in New Mexico. No, there's not, not a whole lot. So I, now that I look back on it, it makes sense, you know, why I didn't get recruited a lot. I mean, yeah, New Mexico, right? Exactly. And then when I say it to you, you guys are at a disadvantage. There's, you yeah. clearly are. When you're in Ohio and PA, you can drive 45 minutes in any direction and get your butt kicked. Just think this way, and I always, go, I always tell everybody this. Look at Penn State. You know, it's simple why they do this. They have good coaches. They do. They get Penn State tuition, and they have the best, they have the best state, the, the recruit. You know what I mean? It's Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and you're getting in-state tuition. It's big. If you get thirty, if you get thirty percent in state, it's a lot of money. You're not paying that much. Okay, opposed to coming from out of state, like Nebraska, in state's fifteen thousand. Out of state's like thirty some thousand. So if I'm getting thirty percent out of state, that's nothing compared to thirty percent in state. And it just makes it so much easier, you know. And that's, you know, they have a great program and great coaches and all that, and great wrestlers. I'm just saying, you're in the best state. You're in the best state. Look at the NSA qualifiers. The and, they're get, and they're getting in-state. Look so, at the NSA qualifiers. Exactly, exactly. It's double Pennsylvania to the next state. Illinois, Ohio, California. Exactly. Pretty crazy. All right, man, you got anything else for me? No, man, just... Uh, is it, is it nice to finally put a face with a voice? Is that is that nice? Did you ever do Iron Man? Did it every year. Ah, every year. I live right next to it. Because I'd, I'd be watching that when I was in high school and I remember hearing that voice. One minute, one minute. I, I, hear, I, hear, I, hear, I, I wonder if that guy's got a face made for radio. Oh, he does. All right, hey, Eric, uh, thanks yeah. for the time, man. Hey, man.